Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be working on this Shimano XTM786 rear derailleur. We're going to be disassembling it and reassembling it again. This was the first XT derailleur that had a clutch included. Unfortunately, this particular derailleur has had a nasty accident. It's lost its bolt here and the outer cage has been damaged as well. I'm going to be looking out for a SLX M7, no, 675 rear derailleur to find or salvage the two parts from it. I really like this derailleur. I've just done a video recently on the M8100. Between the two, I find that this one is better quality. I just like the, the general design. I think it, it still has that, that nice aspect um, that I feel like the newer models have lost. Um, they seem to be more functional now than um, aesthetically nice. But I feel that's important. So let's uh, begin. Let's remove this plastic cap that gives you access to the clutch mechanism. So we're removing this using a number two hex key wrench. One of the uh, key differences with the newer models is the access obviously to the to the uh, adjustment screw here for the clutch. Um, the newer models you can access it from the out outside in, um, and here you have to actually remove the cover to adjust it although you can still do that. Slight differences are that these parts here are just a tiny bit smaller on the, the newer uh, versions for probably weight savings. What we're going to do now is um, take off the tension on that um, the P bolt knuckle. So we're going to remove uh, this little stopper screw right here. To do that we're going to open this up and push it against something to have access uh, to it. So now I've opened this up and we can now remove that screw. Be careful of your fingers. I'm gonna have to lift up that parallelogram cage to be able for it to go around. And there you go, detentioned. Let's remove now the jockey wheels. I'm gonna use a number three and then key wrench. Interesting, I thought there would be some sort of um, bolt here, bolt head on the other side, there isn't. So it looks like we're gonna be removing it from this side. And that will be a number four Allen key wrench. And I believe we have yeah, we've unscrewed this part. Let's remove that spring. Quite dry, but compared to the last one, there's actually still some grease left inside this. Does that remove? Yeah. Let's remove this part as well. There's a clip here that you can remove. Um, should I remove it? Go on, let's just do it. I was gonna say no. Uh, if you don't need to, don't remove it because um, as I found out in the last one, 
Uh, this clip, once it's removed, it can quite quickly damage itself. So yeah, if you don't want to, don't don't do it. Remove that seal. There we go. And now we can take off the clutch. And at the back here, you have a C clip. Ah, scratched it. Okay, well, don't use uh, don't use uh, a flathead screwdriver like I just did. Then you'll need a number five and key wrench, and we'll screw that off. There's a seal that can also be removed. If you want to, you can go for the full swing and remove the limit screws or the anchor bolt. Uh, I will not be doing that as it's not going to give me any more accessibility to the uh, derailleur for the cleaning. I'm going to go ahead and clean my derailleur and uh, we will then proceed on to greasing the parts that require some uh, lubrification. I've now uh, cleaned everything. One little specific uh, detail that I missed out when I was uh, dismantling, there was a tiny little ring here that was underneath the mech of the uh, clutch. So just to point that out, I only saw that after when I was uh, cleaning. But um, you'll see it again when we, uh, when we put this all back together. So I'm going to now put a bit of grease on uh, various parts. Uh, just anywhere where there's a uh, friction and a uh, bit of movement. So I'm going to put that here. I think when I was removing, the, this uh, came out one of the last parts, so let's put this clutch back through. Uh, there's only one way you can actually put this uh, clip back on. Uh, it'll be like this, and it's kind of going at the thinnest point at the uh, bottom of that, uh, I don't know, the shaft of the, uh, the, the clutch. So you'll need again a plier to ply this down. It shouldn't be too difficult. So here we have that ring uh, that I was mentioning before that I'd missed out. Next you have uh, this pivoting part that inserts here. It's a female bolt technically. Um, here we have uh, the mech. So the mech, if you look here, that square hole, there's two little pointy parts on one side only. You want that to be in that direction and uh, you want the lever to be facing right there. So um, I think that's on the off position. Let me check now. Oh, there is no, I don't think it's written down. But uh, yeah, you want it on this side. And uh, so you want this like this. If you put it at the other side when you're installing this, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to end up, um, it's not going to work. Uh, also, if you want, you can put a tiny bit of grease on here. That's going to go between uh, the mech here. Uh, it's going to go onto those roller pins that are on the interior of uh, this uh, ribbony, metal ribbon part that uh, locks the cage in place. So what we're going to do here is we're going to aim at the same time for that shaft of the clutch. It's going to go into the hole uh, of this part. And uh, at the same time, we need to aim for that to go on top of the uh, female bolt. Yep, 
Now there's that seal that we can reinsert. Let's put that ring back on. I think it was this way. And uh, as for the spring, there's um, the hook side. It's gonna go into one of these two holes. If you look at the other end, there's an H shape actually, a grooved, grooved into the uh, back of the plate. Uh, if you want it more tension, I believe it's gonna be on the right and then less is uh, on the left. So hook them up and have that going over that ring. And the other tip of uh, the spring is gonna go into the hole that's at the back of the, um, the P-knuckle. So aim for that. Once you're sure that it's uh, engaged, uh, you're gonna pretty much want to uh, push down. And uh, we're going to start to tighten this up on here, on this end. Ah, that's nice and tight. So get ready with the um, the little stopper bolt uh, that's going to screw around about here. We're going to bring this cage now around anti-clockwise. And you can uh, push that down on something. Let go. Next, we can put that seal back on. Uh, the cover. Grab uh, the pulley, so the one for the, the this side here, the P, P bolt. Uh, that's gonna go here where, the, uh, where it's written G pulley. And uh, we're going to be screwing into that silver, silver part behind. Not too tight. Give us a bit of maneuverability for putting the, the other one in. Tighten up. I'm not gonna too bother because I need to change this anyway at one point. And um, now we can put on the top axle. So I believe it's this side. No, doing it wrong. It's gonna be like this. And uh, it's number five. To finish screwing. Bit tight. There's then a C clip. Grab it. That goes here. Grab your pliers. Done. Right, well, I think that's uh, more or less everything. So thank you for listening. Make sure yours is uh, working, actually. Yeah, it's working. So thank you for listening. I hope this helped you service your XTM786 rear radar. And until next time, peace out.